ready? This is way better with music. You can put music in. So we've gotten to the point where we just cut this and they don't tell me what it is. So I guess I'll just build it how maybe it goes. We don't really know what will come from this. All right, this is a three mag shingle. It'll hold three M4 mags or AK mags. I think we've actually built this on video before. Have we? We have not built it? I don't think so. You remember this? You remember for sure that we did not do this? No. Okay. But I so don't remember it. <laughs> front piece, back piece. I'm going to build this up. You have a lot of ways you can do this. Uh, these marks are at two inches. This is the back piece. And this works well with two inches. You're going to just fold this over to that mark right there. These hems are going to be one inches. If, if you're buying material by the yard, you might want to make your hems smaller so that you use less material, right? Because we're going to conceal an inch around this whole perimeter, um, which does nothing for you. But what it does do, and when you have production sewers, you'll see this, it is much easier to grab that big hem there and sew it down flat than it is to grab this little tiny hem. And also, when we're taking and building a back piece, say we want it four inches wide, we could just go four, five, six, or we could go four, eight, twelve. And just that way you just have a line in the middle and all you have to do is line these lines in the middle up and sew right down. It's, there's always a balancing act between cost of materials and cost of labor. So you'll figure that out for yourself. Like I've built stuff where it's um, old hymns. Cause I, I was like, why are we wasting all this material that's getting concealed that you'll never see? But it really takes production longer when they're trying to make a little tiny hymn than a bigger hymn. So it actually washes out and it's actually while you're wasting the material, you are saving a lot of money in labor. So that's why these hems are one inch hems, but they're marked at, you know, two inches. They're folding into two inch. I'm sure there's somebody who's like, what is he talking about? But the majority of the people um, are smarter than that guy. So they know what I'm talking about. So we're going to go ahead and rip this in. Now you can, if you're doing a bunch of these, you could just sew right in, do them all in a chain, and then come back and catch the other sizes, sides. Or you can come all the way in and then back up to where you needed to be and thus tacking it down. But you get a little bit of uh, shrinkage when you sew forward and backwards, more so than if you just sew the one time. So I just kind of come right about to the line, bury that needle in there, you can kind of see how this is kind of starting to shift. I'm just going to pull it right back in place there and get that down there, just like that. Now, as I'm going from here, this is kind of, because this is 1,000 uh, Din Cordura here. It's a little stiffer than the five. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got this needle down. It's needle strike is down. I'm just going to apply some pressure and walk this in right where I want it to be. So, kind of pull it back where I want it to be, and then just adjust it a couple times, right there. Now it's all sewn down all the way around. You can totally go around and sew this down if you want to. You don't need to. We're literally just making this back piece here. You could also have this cut off and just have this little piece here, and just have this right here. You don't have to have all of this. I've always done it a little thicker on the back, you know, like that, where I'm sewing pals on because I am sewing pals on the back and that's how this is going to attach. Um, over the years, especially with a thousand, we've learned you don't need to do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and now sew this all closed. Line it up across the hem on the top, the seams on the top there. This bottom one's coming up a little short, so I'm going to put all my tension pulling on the bottom and not the top there. There we go. And I'm lining them up as I'm going. Now, 
I'm across the bottom here where the, the bite is, where it folds, and I'm just going to kind of push the work down at an angle this way, and this will get the pillowing, the bubbling out of this thing. And if you did your first three sides correct, this should line up just up right at perfect. And there it is. Now, which side would be the top and why? I've got four layers of Cordura here, two layers here. The two layers is going to be my bottom because I'm going to take this piece and make the front out of it. And I'm going to take this and fold this under over the top right here. This is where my material meets. I'm going to stop about a half inch and I'm going to sew this. And then I want this clean piece here where my mags are coming in here. I don't want it to be able to grab this or move this. And because I'm three layers here, I don't want to have to go through four layers here and making it seven. You totally could, but you have to sew a little bit slower and have a little more finesse if you have a lighter weight machine. So that's why I'm going to put that on the bottom. I don't care that this seam is here. I'm not worried about the mags splitting the seam. I am only worried about the mags catching something. And it's really not even that big of a concern. An AK mag might catch this. You'll see some fraying and you might get a client in the future that has a concern of warranty. Completely strong, but if you just flip it this way, there is no raw edge and there's nothing for that, lo for that lug to uh, stutter on and you'll be able to extract the mag. These will work for AK or M4 mags. If you build all of your stuff to where your magazine pouch will fit an AK mag, it will perfectly fit an AR mag also. You can make them tight enough to fit an AR mag where you will have problems with AK mags. And eventually, if you do that, eventually, you're going to have some knucklehead that keeps putting that AK into that tight slot. It's going to fray or wear the material out. And even though you told him not to do it, he is going to want to warranty that. If you build all your shit right now to where it, you never have to warranty it, um, you know what happens? You don't ever have to warranty it. So I'm going to take this. This is the face of the mag pouch. This is going to make the three cells. And I'm going to just hem this right here. Now we're going to hem these sides. You could have stopped short here, folded this under and done your hem. If you're just learning how to sew this stuff though, just go ahead and travel to the edge until you're really comfortable with the machine. Go ahead and tack it all down, separate, and then sew into the next one. You will find when you're sewing a single, purse, a single piece versus two or three pieces, when you get into two or three pieces, the time per unit is faster if you're doing multiple units. Because um, you're going to flow, you're, you, you got your groove on, and uh, also you're able to sew right into other pieces. Now, we could totally sew from this into this, but anytime you don't have to cut the thread, pull the thread through, and get it all started again, it's much faster. So I'll come right here, tack it, and then run right into the next piece if I had one. Now, this, I do happen to have another piece here. I'm going to take this footprint here, this back, and I'm going to divide this into equal thirds. This should be nine inches, so three inch, six inch. Um, the footprint for an M4 mag, if you build everything three inches wide, you're safe. Um, also works for any of your pals if you're putting modular um, attachments on the back. Three, three, three. Man, almost like I've done that before. Somebody's like, of course, dipshit. Of course it's three. You divided it equally. Just got to sometimes test my calibrated eye. So Velcro. You don't have to put Velcro in these if you're running bungee. If you put Velcro in here, you have the ability to remove the bungee should you want to and still have some method of retention. So you could also, a lot of guys starting out, 
are just going to have one or two sizes of Velcro, right? The, the mainstay for years, we didn't ever have any three inch Velcro for like a decade or more probably. All we had was two inch and one inch Velcro. So we would move it where we needed to. Now, you could get a piece of four inch Velcro. I think that's what these are for. No, these are probably five, four and a half. You could get two pieces of two inch and run them across or a piece of four and do the whole thing. You don't need to, it just goes back to that cost of materials versus cost of labor. So what I'm doing here is lining these. I also don't want Velcro sitting where my uh, magazine pouches are touched by those AK lugs if, you're, if your client's using AK mags. Because they eventually will uh, you know, abrade through that Velcro and then you'll have that, that piece there. It'll catch on the rest of that Velcro. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. Now, oh my God, John didn't sew the middle of the two inch Velcro down. Most people don't know why they do anyways. And it's usually because somebody else they saw do it, did it. Um, you don't need to. If you want the line through these, I'm putting webbing on the back of them already, um, kind of. So there's that. That's the bottom, which is the thinner part. This right here, I'm going to divide. Um, what am I at right here? 12, 15 probably. Nope. Doesn't go into inches. Let's go 30, 40. Okay, so we need to divide that. Turn that off while I do some math. 13. Thirteen and a half. Perfect. All right, so that's divided into thirds. Now I'm gonna put the Velcro here also. Now what this ends up doing is you have Velcro forward and backwards. So if you wanted to run like a Velcro dot retention, you can put an adhesive piece of Velcro on one side of your mag. If you put it on both sides, it is too difficult to get the magazine out. You only wanna put it on one side. Okay, we're only putting it on one side, then why do you have Velcro on both sides? So that either way that your customer indexes their magazine, it will still have retention because you have Velcro on the front and the back. Why did we not run Velcro? Why are we running this two inch Velcro instead of a five inch strip all the way across? Because where those AK mags touch those mags, this is completely clean. There is nothing to abrade, catch, or stutter on. That's why those are like that. You don't have to do that. I'm sure if you ask 20 dudes who perceive themselves to be the industry leader in this industry, um, they'll tell you 20 reasons not to do it. It's all right. They're probably not, you probably don't have access to those guys. They're probably not at all helpful to you. And do whatever you want to do. A lot of guys build stuff differently than other people for the sole purpose of being different. So they can say, well, we do it this way. Maybe. Um, the difference is, I don't know who any of those guys are. Something happened to these scissors. I sharpened them the other day. And now they, they'll cut right on the tip, but they won't cut thread from here to here. I've got like this dead spot. I swear they, I dropped them or somebody dropped them. Something happened to them. Okay, I have uh, bungee pulls. We don't need those yet. I have front pals. We'll do those first. That's the bottom, that's the top. 
where are we going here? I'm gonna go 13 and a half from here and 13 from here. So each of these pockets is 13 and a half centimeters, each cell, and then the middle is 13. Why is that? Well, I'm gonna lose some when I sew over this. It's gonna tighten it up on the side cells. Um, so I've got that extra centimeter to work with, so I put half here and half here, and um, that's, that's why. We could totally make it so that the pattern's different if we did that and made it so that we had an even centimeter per cell. Um, that center cell would still be tighter than those outer cells. So I'm really, I probably shouldn't even say this. If you're watching me to see how to do this, none of that matters to you right now. You're, you're not even there yet. All right, front pals. So also, when you run your pals, you can see these are folded over. We actually manufacture these. It's a piece of Cordura that's two inches wide. It folds into one inch, and then we apply a 5038 edge tape on the back, and it gets two passes and a third through the center. We, there's all kinds of ways to make pals out of Cordura. They are way nicer. They look nicer than webbing or even printed webbing. If your client's really using this stuff and it's not for fashion, you're never going to see that, pals, because they're not they're covering it up. But we're going to go ahead and space this on here somewhat evenly, question mark. All right, we want to go. We know we want these in the center, and I need an inch and a half per. So let's go ahead and divide these up. We're at five, two and a half. Two and a half, two and a half. I'm just going to make these guides just so when I'm sewing these on here, I can see. I should have done them in a different color than all my other lines, but this will work. What I'm looking for is, do I want this, with this webbing, do you want to fold it under or do you want it raw? Function will be the same. One just looks a little nicer. And I'm trying to determine what these are cut at versus what I actually have here one and a half. You know your channels need to be one and a half. I should probably say a lot less. I'm probably confusing these guys. Yep, I need to fold these over. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Man, it's hot in here. Oh, no. See, I'm setting it to the top. I've got all these built. It looks like half an inch down. Why? I don't know why, but we'll go ahead and make them like all the rest of them. Now I just sewed that in five times. Totally don't need to, especially on these two lines, because this is the front that's going to sew and you're gonna put a lot more thread in here. You could totally sew these down with a single stitch. But it sure sounds cool when you open that machine up, doesn't it? There's a ton of ways to do PALS webbing. You will find a lot of guys starting to build this stuff don't have any ability to put this webbing on properly or even resemble a straight line. A lot of guys are using different laminates and materials and the, the laser cuts out all of this for them. 
Go ahead and tack this line here. That's the center of that mag dot there. When you start out, you'll find yourself sewing with terrible lighting because you just use whatever you have. When you start putting your money back into your proper lighting and equipment, things get a lot easier. I like so much light. Like I would never, I don't ever sew under a, a situation that actually looks like this. Where I sew, it's actually much easier to sew, but it doesn't look as good on the camera. Um, I want so much light like I want a light bar off of a truck on my sewing machine and if that light makes a shadow I want another light to kill that shadow like where I sew it's actually I'll bet it's 10 15 degrees hotter where I sew as opposed to the rest of the shop and a lot of that's just because I'm dumb because I haven't switched to you know newer lighting I'm using older lighting that's, that's hot and most of the newer lighting is not as hot. By hot, I mean color, by temperature, not color. People are like, cool light. I don't want any fucking cool light. I want melt you. I want it to look like, how much light do you want? Well, I want it to melt him. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tucking these under. We know we need these at least uh, one and a half inches, depending on what your attachments you're using. I did just sharpen this, right? I think so. That, that was today. There's a really cool, I've, I've, I'm always against a pencil sharpener, especially with employees when you're, when you're buying the pencils, but it gets to a point like, when you start business, you don't have money to buy and spend on consumables. So you're like, hey, sharpen that pencil less when it's just you, right? You know how to do that and not eat the shit out, not hold it there and go, Rrr. but you will see when you get employees, you will watch employees do shit that it's cheaper to just let them get the pencils and eat the pencils up. Just buy more pencils. They're considered consumable. Um, but there is a pencil sharpener out there. It's USB rechargeable. It's pretty cool. Um, you put the pencil in. It sucks the pencil down to the proper level, sharpens it, and ejects it. So you don't have some monkey just sitting there chewing up pencils in the pencil sharpener. You totally could run this webbing all the way to the edge. It's just more bulk that you have to sew through. And if you're gonna fold it under on the edge, it's a lot more bulk. So the only advantage would be that you're not having to fold it under, but it's a single like raw edge there. And when you're sewing across that on the edge, um, you have the chance to bust the scab on that sear. So there's really not an advantage to it. You have to really slow down. So while, you, while I am hemming this under, Time-wise, it's about the same as just putting it all the way to the edge. There's not an advantage to it. Now, these marks are at one and a half. I'm sewing on the outside of the one and a half. There's all kinds of attachments now. It used to everything was around malice clips and the snap, and the, the standard was inch and a half. Um, the spacing still works at inch and a half, but you've got a lot of attachments that are less wide than they used to be which makes it easier for you to lace that stuff on and off. It's still every bit as tight. It's, it's plenty tight. Guys spent so much time sewing attachments onto their shit and fabricating and trying to get around having to pay a royalty on the, the Natick snap or whatever. And now it's just industry standard just to let them, you know, provide whatever they use. Okay, so those are the attachments. 
You can totally channel these up to one and a half, thus killing this. You don't need to. It, it works. We've got thousands of these out in this design. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put the pals on the back. I think that's what, yeah, that's the pals for the back, four of these. And I think I've got them run uh, equally uh, down, top, bottom. We're going to start. I'm going to start on this edge here. something on the bottom of my foot that catches right there as it's trying to come off and it just stutters and hangs there. As much as I tacked those down, I didn't need to because I'm going to sew this face on here. There's a lot of bulk to this. You could definitely build this product thinner, uh, thus lighter. Probably should have marked where I'm putting those. That's why I sharp all that shit I told you a minute ago. That's why I sharpen with a razor blade. It gives me just what I need, and it doesn't eat the pencil away. A lot of times, when you sharpen on a pencil sharpener, it gives you a super fine point, and as soon as you go to use it, you break half of the tip off. Crayola pencils are the best. You can use Taylor's chalk and chalk pencils and grease pencils and crayons and all kinds of shit. There might be something better out there and I'm just stubborn and set in my ways, but I have not found anything that's better for what I do than Crayola colored pencils. You can buy a cheaper pencil called Rose Art. Walmart's got both of them. The Rose Art pencils are shit compared. Same with lighters. You can buy a, a cheap, no name lighter, or you can buy a Bic lighter. The Bic lighters cost more. The Bic lighters last a lot longer, give you a better flame than the others. It's bath. I see people like, man, you could totally run a candle. The fuck are you talking about? Have a candle sitting here to burn threads and shit. Like, people do it, I guess. I mean, they did before electricity, I would, I would assume. But you have a floor in your house, right? You don't live with a, I mean, maybe one of you lives with a dirt floor, so maybe you're using a candle. Weirdo. Maybe he's Amish. He's Amish tactical gear builder. Not that the Amish are weird. You're just the weirdo Amish guy building tactical gear. do have a little pillow there, a little bubble. See it? They're never going to know. Okay, there's that. Now, as you see, we can divide these channels or you can be lazy and not divide the channels. Uh, these channels here, it's easier to put it on if they're not sewn down all the way into columns. This one obviously has to because I need something to tie this bungee around. You could completely sew something on the inside, which then again it might attach, you know, catch. You could fold over some one inch or put some ribbon here to attach that, or you could put grommets. You can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of it. You're the dude making it. You build what you want to build. That's the bottom. This is the top. Use my calibrated eyeball. I'm going to hold this in place so that it doesn't shift when that travels across. Out of thread.
pick the thread up, pull the thread out, lock it in wherever you were. There we were. Tack that in, come down, travel. There we go. Get all that thread off of your table out of the way. If you need to, you can use your space or your gauge, whatever. There's that. This is the part that I like the least is putting the face on things. There are a lot of times when I'll come in here for hours and just sew, and I'll build both assemblies, and then I will go put those on a production sewing machine, and one of the girls will put these things together in the morning. A lot of times I'll also forget the label, as I did on this one, because it should have went right here. So a lot of times you'll see something with no label on it, and that's usually me that sewed that thing. Like this one, there's no label on here. So. Lucky you, it's the upside down airplane stamp. If you don't know what that is, what I'm talking about, you can look it up. Do you know what the upside down airplane stamp? You don't, you really don't. The post office printed a, it was like passenger mail or something, you know, old stamp. But the plates were struck upside down. So the airplane was upside down but the wording and the cost of the postage was oriented normal, but the airplane was upside down. And they had a, some of those get out there. And I remember hearing about it as a child and seeing it, and um, there were stories about it and stuff. It was before I was ever born, I believe. But if you were to find one of those stamps, they're actually worth thousands and thousands of dollars because it's a, it's a rarity. That's the upside down airplane stamp. You own 20? Yeah. Um, I just bought airplanes instead. It's okay though, I mean, somebody's gotta collect airplane stamps. I don't know, it might be worth, who knows what they're really worth. Yeah. Then again too, if you had them, they're only worth that if somebody will pay you that. Yeah. When everybody's starving, that stamp's probably not worth that much. You just have to be on the island with the people that aren't starving. I just tack these down a little bit, keep them in place, and then you'll watch. I'll kind of push them all into place. Scissors are not cut in little threads. Now 
Now, I'm sure some dude can make a video making this look way easier than I'm making it look. Um, now you can take your pleat here, what you have, it's gonna overlap, you know, like that. You can do the sides first and then the bottom, or you can do the bottom and then the sides. Some dudes are weirdos. You'll figure out which one works better for you. I'm just gonna even this up. My palace is pretty low here. I just want that to fall at or around there. And you can make real big, really big pleats, and it just makes your it makes so much bulk down in the mag pouch that the mag sits high. So you'll you'll figure it out as you play with it. And do you want it lighter or do you want it more durable? And how durable does it have to be? What is more durable if it if it lasts you through you know, 13, 14 deployments with multiple dudes, is that durable enough? Probably. Just a touch below, just a scoosh. Like a gnat's ass. <laughs> like the hair, like a, an ant's hair. You get ant's hair on an ant's ass? Yes. <laughs> That's right, like a, like a cunt hair. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this out and work off this side, but it's easier for me on this side to work out of the other side of the presser foot. But got it sewn up a little high so I'm gonna nick a couple stitches here hopefully and not my finger dullest razor blade in the world these are another thing that's a consumable get used to using these you can do seam rippers all kinds of shit you can buy a package of I think there's a hundred in the package it sits in this little thing you can bolt it to your workbench whatever and I think you get a hundred of them for like 20 bucks they last a while we when we were poor um, we had a dude in the shop that actually sharpened these things. But when you're doing this as a hobby and you're starting out, man, I understand. You spent all your money on, you know, material and Velcro and stuff. The last thing you want to spend your last 20, 30 bucks on is razor blades. But when you do, it'll last you a long time. Should have done the bottom first. I also should have marked this to see where I wanted the centers on these to be. Well, we are kind of marked. We're right here. Do you ever mess up? I don't think so. Um, no, I never mess up. Everything's on purpose. Well, if it if if it came out different than you thought it was going to be, but it still functions, is it wrong? Nope. And. Why do I build this this way? It's because I built the first one this way. Had I built the first one differently, is this how I would be building this one right now? I've probably made, I don't know, over my life I've made a few hundred of these, but I mean, the shop has put out thousands of these. This is where your favorite screwdriver comes in or tool or whatever. I'm gonna push this in and pull the top. So I'm just tightening that up. So it doesn't, so it goes where I want it instead of where it wants to go. I'm gonna go ahead while I'm here and flip it around and come back and catch the other side. And ideally, your pleats on both sides are equal and in the same place. Whether that just happened or not remains to be seen. 
I don't know. Looks pretty good, huh? I've never seen a mountain good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I can tell you that I missed. Yep. See, I didn't catch that same line. So I've got the initial line I put, and then I have this monstrosity right here. Still going to function. It's just the uh, upside down airplane stamp. It's an original, that's right. If da Vinci recreated one of his paintings, did da Vinci paint? That's Leonardo DiCaprio. But, yeah, Michelangelo. DiCaprio. So, Tom Cruise. if he repainted one of his paintings and it was better, would it be of more value? No, the original would be the more value, even though the second one looked better. They said Da Vinci um, didn't actually sleep. He only took naps. So he'd be up for four hours and then sleep for 20 minutes. I think that's what they said. So all you lazy motherfuckers sleeping your lives away. I don't know if I can fall asleep in 20 minutes. If you're up for only, if you're up for four hours and put your body on that course, I'll bet you would. Maybe if I started at 24 hours awake, maybe then fell asleep for 20 minutes. Yeah, but imagine how imagine how bad you would feel being up 24 hours and then sleeping for 20 minutes. Yeah, but at least you could start the cycle. Going yeah, like that. yeah. Set your circadian rhythm. Is the circadian rhythm always off the sun? I don't know. Do you have a circadian rhythm if you have to live underground for a few years? I don't think so. Does the body know? Do any of these guys listening know? Dean Dupree? Yeah. I'll bet he does. I'll bet Justin Souders knows. Probably. Seems like he meditates for like four hours and like sleeps for 20 minutes. Well, he did go live with the Buddhists and the, him, the priests. Pretty beautiful. Stop a knife, blade. Stop a knife, according to Scully. All right, let's do the uh, the tabs. You can do your tabs however you want to do your tabs. You can adjust them. Um, I want to say these are 11 inches. Is how we do our tabs. And you could totally build them backwards too, and build a channel here so they go through. That way you have like a, a fold over or you can build it up right here. You could sew something on here so it's more tactile with gloves. Um, we do these bungee pulls this way so that they fit perfectly on an M4 mag or they split and cradle the corner of an AK mag. So you do yours however you want yours. I take these, fold them in uh, equally, even them up. just like so, and then I figure out where I want these to be um, a little, I want to start right about half and I'm going to come down a little. I want the top pole to be a little more than half. I'm going to tack them, so right back around. And you can put tough tack or grip tack or whatever you want, rubbery stuff. You could cement them, rubber cement them. You can put whatever you want on here. When you see real guys use real gear, um, it's surprising how different, and just, and even from platoon to platoon. We saw dudes putting like nine millimeter casings. We saw guys putting 45 shells and then taping them up to make, um, you know, better pulls. We saw guys with 550 putting loops, guys doing all kinds of paracord, macrame shit. Just whatever, it doesn't matter what it is if it works for you, right? And you can always, look around and find other ideas and stuff, but necessity drives invention, and a lot of that does happen uh, at the field level. Okay. 
And then you also, when you're doing a bunch of these, you might want to mark them because what you'll find is when you just travel one to the next to the next, you'll get a little bit of shift and your ninth one won't look anything like your first one. It's just making your master. Make a master of whatever you need to transfer your marks to and make the marks on everything off the master. If you travel down the line, you'll have a lot of shift and the final product won't look anything like the original one. We actually get a lot of comments. Not, not, a, not a lot of comments versus like the shorts, but the comments on the sew video are all of like very real comments. There's a lot of interaction of, you know, what, what dudes got from it. And I see people after, like a lot of dudes get on the lives. I do a live every night at nine o'clock. A lot of, when I'm like, hey, there's a lot of you dudes here I don't recognize, how'd you get here? And a lot of them do say from the sew videos. I don't see many people doing it. I don't, yeah, there's not. I mean, um, there was a company that made leather, uh, like attache cases and stuff. I can't remember the name of them. Not, maybe Filson, I don't, maybe not Filson, I don't know. But they were down in Mexico. They, they have this whole village in Mexico and the entire village does their manufacturing. And they were talking about like, look, we're gonna show you how to copy our bag. And they went down there and built it like step by step. Like you could, if you had the equipment or the, the desire, you could duplicate this, but what's the takeaway? There's a lot of work. It's a whole fucking village that it yeah. takes to make these bags. Like they have a, they, they built them a church and they built them like a lot of facility in Mexico. Um, and that whole town makes these bags like, I'll show you how to build this. I'm not gonna give you all my measurements and dimensions. I mean, I would definitely sell them to you. I mean, all you gotta do is buy something, take it apart and figure it out. But people are inherently lazy. The dude that's gonna copy your shit, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna do it anyways. He's gonna make one or two for himself and he's gonna wanna set himself apart somehow. Um, so whatever, you know. But most people are gonna watch it. I mean, how many, uh, how it's made did I ever watch, you know, hundreds or if not thousands of how it made. I'm not going to go and start making ball bearings or leather gloves or <laughs> it's just an appreciation for, you know, craftsmanship, especially a material that you don't work in normally. Like I love, I really love like steampunk stuff. But when I see it, I would rather buy it than to have to. Yeah, yeah I mean. I mean, if you look, we're in a shop, there's tools and equipment and stuff all around here, but shit, I could go set out to make some seemingly easy build and it, it might only take an hour or two to build the thing, but it, man, it would take me 20, 20 hours to find the parts. It'd be faster to just go buy new tools. So when I see something, you know, I'm like, I could build that or I could pay the dude who did a beautiful job building it and I could sit on my sewing machine doing what I do a few hours and pay him, you know, whatever he wants for it. I can totally change my own oil, but why would I change my own oil? I mean, there's, there's plenty of oil change places. I've got friends that are mechanics. I'm definitely, if push come to shove, I can change my own oil. I used to, but why would I do that? I can just do what I do for an hour and pay a man whatever he wants to do that. And now, like we don't even have to go places to have that done. We're able to have people, come. it's just like getting tattoos, man. We don't go to a tattoo studio. We fly the artist out here and have them, you know, do the work. That's why I have so many terrible tattoos. Are you laughing? Mm -hmm. I did all the tattoos Brandel has. I've done many tattoos. Mini is like three? Oh no, I've done way more than three tattoos. How many is many? Oh, I don't know. Four, probably. No, I've, I've, I, bet I've bet, I bet I have put ink in more than four people's skin. Think so? <laughs> ten. Maybe ten. <laughs> but I mean, there's plenty of dudes down Full at court. designs? No. There's plenty of dudes at Court Square in any small town who you're paying to have tattoos and you're probably their second or third tattoo. I mean, look at very the tattoos true, that most true. of you guys have. 
I trust you. Of course, of course. Yeah. I would do my own. I have a girl out here who does her own tattoos on herself, and she's sure. getting she's like that's her. She is like throw the dart and get the tattoo right. Pick your tat. What tattoo should I get? I don't know. Throw a dart. She's getting better. Like the she actually is getting like if you're willing to fucking put tattoos on yourself. I mean. Isn't that the OnlyFans thing now? Get a bunch of random tattoos that make no fucking sense. Is that OnlyFans or is that YouTube or where is that? Shorts or somewhere? A lot of these, a lot of chicks out there with face tattoos. Do you know chicks that have face tattoos? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do you know any chicks that don't have face tattoos? Yeah. Which do you know more of? Uh, no tattoos. I don't believe that. No. I got a lot of weird tattoos. I know. What's the weirdest one? Um, Care Bear farting. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Isn't that a Grateful Dead thing? No. Just a Care Bear farting on Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Tennis player? NASCAR. That's the one with the orange ba ball, right? That's the basketball thing? Yeah. Why, why, do you know Jeff Gordon? No. Is he alive? Yeah. Jeff Gordon. Oh, that's the dude that rode, uh, he had um, a rally car in uh, Paris to Dakar. Did you know that? Yeah, in Africa. Do you have any cuss words tattooed on you? Do I? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, made in the motherfucking USA. I have that, right? Okay. I, th I think. I don't even know what tattoos I. Nope. Maybe I don't. Nope. No nope, I don't. I'm going to have to fix that. I know. What language should they be in? I don't know. I figured you'd have a couple F-bombs on you. I have a pretty cool um, paperweight. Looks like a, kind of like a hand grenade. It's made, somebody made it. I don't know what the body of it originally was, um, but it's got like this wire cable fuse and it has F on the front. It's an F-bomb, you know, like Facebook, but fuck F-bomb. Yeah. But the thing cuts you, like you'll be fucking with it every time you touch it. The wire cable, they just cut it and it stabs the shit out of you. Um, somebody gave it to Rebecca um, years and years ago and she was like, you need to have this. And she gave it to me. I still have it. It's sitting in my other office at, in the other building. All right. So these, you can get fancy with these. Um, you can tie them off in knots. You can not tie it. You can do whatever knot you want. You can get fancy and have a shock cord so you can adjust it, whatever. Um, you can use thicker cord, skinnier cord. You can do whatever you want with these. I only do clove hitch. Clove hitch for your horse. I'm going to put a hitching post out front. Perfect. For me? Are you? I thought you're scared of horses. I am. Not donkeys, though. Not. You'll ride a donkey, but not a horse. Yeah. Makes all the sense. How about an ostrich? We Perfect. could go old time. Perfect. You should get a handlebar mustache and um, some glasses, and you could box mustache like this. Thick. All right. So there it is. Three mag shingle tiger stripe. We're going to go in there and chop these off here. I'm going to show you how to do that, or how I do that. And uh, we will give this away to a Patreon member sometime in the New Year future. Oh, are we giving this to the guys that get this? No, we're not. This is Wait. something else. Oh, okay. Oh, next week is the rigs. Yep, they get the shooter kit, comes with a stacked micro, hydro carrier, H harness, and FUPA dangler. And the winners, there will be two winners, and they get to pick whether they want tiger stripe or woodland camouflage. All right, for your excess webbing, you can cut these with a scissor, just like so. And then come from this side and kiss them with this flame. And then smear right over it and gives it a nice seal, sears it. Nice and clean, as you see, perfection. Um, or you can use this rope cutter that you can buy for like 65 bucks. And while it's weird when you first start using it, it might not feel right. I'm gonna show you how to use this thing to where it's awesome. Cause it's super hot. If you get your finger next to it, it will cut your finger just like it cuts webbing. And I always left webbing long so I could cut it on the rope cutter. Um, 
but I saw my guy, I think it was Jake, and he was using tweezers. I'm like, holy shit, why have I not been doing that the last 20 years? Oh man, the air conditioner. Buy you one of these. Doesn't matter which one. You can get it off Amazon or wherever. It'll heat up. The fan doesn't really blow on it. You can. I just kind of blow it past so it pulls that. You can also do a draw fan like we have on these. They also make a little box that is a draw fan that goes into a filter. Right here. Hear it. Which one looks better? The one I did by hand looks better. It does. But I'd rather have it long than short and melt this quarter. There it is. Hold on, meow. You gotta, you gotta fix this. Here we go. There, there you go. There you go. There he goes. 